William of Ockham, also Ockham, from Latin, Juliomus Ockhamus, c. 1287–1347 was an English Franciscan friar and scholastic philosopher and theologian, who is believed to have been born in Ockham, a small village in Surrey. He is considered to be one of the major figures of medieval thought and was at the centre of the major intellectual and political controversies of the 14th century. He is commonly known for Occam's razor, the methodological principle that bears his name, and also produced significant works on logic, physics, and theology. In the Church of England, his day of commemoration is 10 April. Life William of Occam was born in Occam, Surrey in 1285 and joined the Franciscan order at an early age. It is believed that he studied theology at the University of Oxford from 1309 to 1321, but while he completed all the requirements for a master's degree in theology, he was never made a regent master. Because of this, he acquired the honorific title Venerabilis Inceptor, or Venerable Beginner. An inceptor was a student formally admitted to the ranks of teachers by the university authorities. During the Middle Ages, theologian Peter Lombard's Sentences 1150 had become a standard work of theology, and many ambitious theological scholars wrote commentaries on it. William of Ockham was among these scholarly commentators. However, William's commentary was not well received by his colleagues, or by the church authorities. In 1324, his commentary was condemned as unorthodox by a synod of bishops, and he was ordered to Avignon, France, to defend himself before a papal court. An alternative understanding, recently proposed by George Nish, suggests that he was initially appointed in Avignon as a professor of philosophy in the Franciscan school, and that his disciplinary difficulties did not begin until 1327. It is generally believed that these charges were levied by Oxford Chancellor John Lutterell. The Franciscan minister-general, Michael of Cesena, had been summoned to Avignon, to answer charges of heresy. A theological commission had been asked to review his commentary on the sentences, and it was during this that William of Ockham found himself involved in a different debate. Michael of Cesena had asked William to review arguments surrounding apostolic poverty. The Franciscans believed that Jesus and his apostles owned no property either individually or in common, and the rule of St. Francis commanded members of the order to follow this practice. This brought them into conflict with Pope John XXII. Because of the Pope's attack on the rule of St. Francis, William of Ockham, Michael of Cesena and other leading Franciscans fled Avignon on 26 May 1328, and eventually took refuge in the court of the Holy Roman Emperor Louis IV of Bavaria, who was also engaged in dispute with the papacy, and became William's patron. After studying the works of John XXII and previous papal statements, William agreed with the minister-general. In return for protection and patronage William wrote treatises that argued for Emperor Louis to have supreme control over church and state in the Holy Roman Empire. On June 6, 1328, William was officially excommunicated for leaving Avignon without permission. And William argued that John XXII was a heretic for attacking the doctrine of apostolic poverty and the rule of St. Francis, which had been endorsed by previous popes. However it should be noted that William of Ockham's philosophy was never officially condemned as heretical, he spent much of the remainder of his life writing about political issues, including the relative authority and rights of the spiritual and temporal powers. After Michael of Cesena's death in 1342, William became the leader of the small band of Franciscan dissidents living in exile with Louis IV. William of Ockham died prior to the outbreak of the plague on 9 April 1347. He was officially rehabilitated by Innocent VI in 1359. <inaudible> Faith and reason William of Ockham espoused fideism, stating that, "...only faith gives us access to theological truths. The ways of God are not open to reason, for God has freely chosen to create a world and establish a way of salvation within it apart from any necessary laws that human logic or rationality can uncover." He believed that science was a matter of discovery and saw God as the only ontological necessity. His importance is as a theologian with a strongly developed interest in logical method, and whose approach was critical rather than system building. Topic. Philosophical thought 
In scholasticism, William of Ockham advocated reform in both method and content, the aim of which was simplification. William incorporated much of the work of some previous theologians, especially Duns Scotus. From Duns Scotus, William of Ockham derived his view of divine omnipotence, his view of grace and justification, much of his epistemology and ethical convictions. However, he also reacted to and against Scotus in the areas of predestination, penance, his understanding of universals, his formal distinction ex parte re that is, as applied to created things and his view of parsimony which became known as Occam's razor. Nominalism William of Occam was a pioneer of nominalism, and some consider him the father of modern epistemology, because of his strongly argued position that only individuals exist, rather than supra-individual universals, essences, or forms, and that universals are the products of abstraction from individuals by the human mind and have no extra mental existence. He denied the real existence of metaphysical universals and advocated the reduction of ontology. William of Ockham is sometimes considered an advocate of conceptualism rather than nominalism, for whereas nominalists held that universals were merely names, i.e. words rather than extant realities, conceptualists held that they were mental concepts, i.e. the names were names of concepts, which do exist, although only in the mind. Therefore, the universal concept has for its object, not a reality existing in the world outside us, but an internal representation which is a product of the understanding itself and which supposes in the mind the things to which the mind attributes it, that is, it holds, for the time being, the place of the things which it represents. It is the term of the reflective act of the mind. Hence the universal is not a mere word, as Rosalind taught, nor a sermo, as Peter Abillard held, namely the word is used in the sentence, but the mental substitute for real things, and the term of the reflective process. For this reason William has sometimes also been called a terminist. To distinguish him from a nominalist or a conceptualist, William of Ockham was a theological voluntarist who believed that if God had wanted to, he could have become incarnate as a donkey or an ox, or even as both a donkey and a man at the same time. He was criticized for this belief by his fellow theologians and philosophers. Topic. Efficient reasoning One important contribution that he made to modern science and modern intellectual culture was efficient reasoning with the principle of parsimony in explanation and theory building that came to be known as Occam's razor. This maxim, as interpreted by Bertrand Russell, states that if one can explain a phenomenon without assuming this or that hypothetical entity, there is no ground for assuming it, i.e. that one should always opt for an explanation in terms of the fewest possible causes, factors, or variables. He turned this into a concern for ontological parsimony. The principle says that one should not multiply entities beyond necessity, entia non sunt multiplicanda sign necessitate, although this well known formulation of the principle is not to be found in any of William's extant writings. He formulates it as, For nothing ought to be posited without a reason given, unless it is self evident, literally, known through itself, or known by experience or proved by the authority of sacred scripture. For William of Ockham, the only truly necessary entity is God, everything else is contingent. He thus does not accept the principle of sufficient reason, rejects the distinction between essence and existence, and opposes the Thomistic doctrine of active and passive intellect. His skepticism to which his ontological parsimony request leads appears in his doctrine that human reason can prove neither the immortality of the soul, nor the existence, unity, and infinity of God. These truths, he teaches, are known to us by revelation alone. Topic. Natural philosophy William wrote a great deal on natural philosophy, including a long commentary on Aristotle's physics. According to the principle of ontological parsimony, he holds that we do not need to allow entities in all ten of Aristotle's categories, we thus do not need the category of quantity, as the mathematical entities are not real. Mathematics must be applied to other categories, such as the categories of substance or qualities, thus anticipating modern scientific renaissance while violating Aristotelian prohibition of metabasis. Topic. Theory of knowledge In the theory of knowledge, William rejected the scholastic theory of species, as unnecessary and not supported by experience, in favor of a theory of abstraction. 
This was an important development in late medieval epistemology. He also distinguished between intuitive and abstract cognition. Intuitive cognition depends on the existence or non existence of the object, whereas abstractive cognition abstracts the object from the existence predicate. Interpreters are, as yet, undecided about the roles of these two types of cognitive activities. Topic. Political theory William of Ockham is also increasingly being recognized as an important contributor to the development of Western constitutional ideas, especially those of government with limited responsibility. He was one of the first medieval authors to advocate a form of church-state separation, and was important for the early development of the notion of property rights. His political ideas are regarded as natural or secular, holding for a secular absolutism. The views on monarchical accountability espoused in his Dialogus written between 1332 and 1347 greatly influenced the conciliar movement and assisted in the emergence of liberal democratic ideologies. William argued for complete separation of spiritual rule and earthly rule. He thought that the Pope and churchmen have no right or grounds at all for secular rule like having property, citing 2 Tim, 2-4. That belongs solely to earthly rulers, who may also accuse the Pope of crimes, if need be, after the fall God had given men, including non-Christians, two powers, private ownership and the right to set their rulers, who should serve the interest of the people, not some special interests. Thus he preceded Thomas Hobbes in formulating social contract theory along with earlier scholars. William of Ockham said that the Franciscans avoided both private and common ownership by using commodities, including food and clothes, without any rights, with mere uses facti, the ownership still belonging to the donor of the item or to the Pope. Their opponents such as Pope John XXII wrote that use without any ownership cannot be justified. It is impossible that an external deed could be just if the person has no right to do it. Thus the disputes on the heresy of Franciscans led William of Ockham and others to formulate some fundamentals of economic theory and the theory of ownership. Topic. Logic In Logic, William of Ockham wrote down in words the formulae that would later be called de Morgan's laws, and he pondered ternary logic, that is, a logical system with three truth values, a concept that would be taken up again in the mathematical logic of the 19th and 20th centuries. His contributions to semantics, especially to the maturing theory of supposition, are still studied by logicians. William of Ockham was probably the first logician to treat empty terms in Aristotelian syllogistic effectively, he devised an empty term semantics that exactly fit the syllogistic. Specifically, an argument is valid according to William's semantics if and only if it is valid according to prior analytics. Topic. Literary Ockhamism, Nominalism William of Ockham and his works have been discussed as a possible influence on several late medieval literary figures and works, especially Geoffrey Chaucer, but also Jean Molinet, the Gawain poet, François Rabelais, John Skelton, Julian of Norwich, the York and Townley plays, and Renaissance romances. Only in very few of these cases is it possible to demonstrate direct links to William of Ockham or his texts. Correspondences between Occamist and nominalist philosophy, theology and literary texts from medieval to postmodern times have been discussed within the scholarly paradigm of literary nominalism. Erasmus, in his Praise of Folly, criticized him together with Duns Scotus as fueling unnecessary controversies inside the Church. Works <laughs> <laughs> The standard edition of the philosophical and theological works is, William of Ockham, Opera Philosophica et Theologica, Gedeon Gal, et al., eds. 17 vols. St. Bonaventure, N.Y., The Franciscan Institute, 1967-88. The seventh volume of the Opera Philosophica contains the doubtful and spurious works. The political works, all but the dialogus, have been edited in H. S. Offler, et al., eds. Gallimi de Occam Opera Politica, 4 vols, 1940-97, Manchester, Manchester University Press vols, 1-3, Oxford, Oxford University Press Volume 4. Abbreviations, OT Topic. Opera Theologica Vol. 1-10, Op. 
Opera Philosophica Vol. 1 to 7. Topic: Philosophical Writings. Summa Logicae, Sum of Logic, C. 1323, Opus 1. Expositionis in Libros Artis Logicae Proemium, 1321-24, Opus 2. Expositio in Librum Porphyry de Praeticabilibus, 1321-24, Opus 2. Expositio in Librum Praeticamentorum Aristoteles, 1321-24, Opus 2. Expositio in Librum in Librum Parahermenias Aristoteles, 1321-24, Opus 2. Tractatus de predestination et de prescientia dei respectu fatororum contingentium Treatise on predestination and God's foreknowledge with respect to future contingents, 1322-24, Opus 2. Expositio super libros elencorum Exposition of Aristotle's Sophistic Refutations, 1322-24, Opus 3. Expositio in libros physicorum Aristoteles. Prologus at Libri I3 Exposition of Aristoteles Physics 1322-24, Opus 4. Expositio in Libros Physicorum Aristoteles. Prologus at Libri IV8 Exposition of Aristoteles Physics 1322-24, Opus 5. Brevis Summa Libri Physicorum Brief Summa of the Physics, 1322-23, Opus 6. Summula Philosophiae Naturalis Little Summa of Natural Philosophy, 1319-21, Opus 6. Quaestiones in Libros Physicorum Aristoteles Questions on Aristotle's Books of the Physics, before 1324, Opus 6. Theological writings In Libros Sententiarum Commentary on the Sentences of Peter Lombard Book 1 Ordinatio completed shortly after July 1318 OT1-4 Books EIV Reportatio 1317-18 Transcription of the Lectures OT5-7 Quaestiones Variae OT8 Quotilabeta Septem before 1327 OT9 Tractatus de Quantitate 1323-24 OT10 Tractatus de Corpore Christi, thirteen twenty three to twenty four, OT ten. Topic Political Writings Opus Nonagint Adirum, thirteen thirty two to thirty four. Epistola ad Fraters Minores, thirteen thirty four. Dialogus before thirteen thirty five. Tractatus contra Johannum, twenty two, thirteen thirty five. Tractatus contra Benedictum, 12, 1337 to 38. Octo quaestiones de potestate papi, 1340 to 41. Consultatio de causa matrimoniale, 1341 to 42. Breviloquium, 1341 to 42. De imperatorum et pontificum potestate, also known as defensorium, 1346 to 47. Topic. Doubtful writings Tractatus Minor Logicae Lesser Treatise on Logic 1340-47, Opus 7. Elementarium Logicae Primer of Logic 1340-47, Opus 7. Topic. Spurious writings Tractatus de Praedicamentis Opus 7. Quaestio de relation, opus seven. Centiloquium, opus seven. Tractatus de principis theologia, opus seven. Topic Translations. Topic Philosophical works. Philosophical writings. T. R. P. Boehner, Rev. S. Brown, Indianapolis, in 1990. Occam's Theory of Terms, Part 1 of the Summa Logicae, translated by Michael J. Liu, Notre Dame, London, University of Notre Dame Press, 1974 Translation of Summa Logicae, Part 1 Occam's Theory of Propositions, Part 2 of the Summa Logicae, translated by Alfred J. Fredozo and Henry Sherman, Notre Dame, University of Notre Dame Press, 1980 Translation of Summa Logicae, Part 2 
Demonstration and Scientific Knowledge in William of Ockham, a translation of Summa Logicae III, De Syllogismo Demonstrativo, and Selections from the Prologue to the Ordinatio, translated by John Lee Longeway, Notre Dame, in, University of Notre Dame, 2007. Occam on Aristotle's Physics, a translation of Occam's Brevis Summa Libri Physicorum, translated by Julian Davies, Street. Bonaventure, N.Y., The Franciscan Institute, 1989 Kluge, Ike Henner W. William of Occam's Commentary on Porphyry, Introduction and English Translation. Franciscan Studies 33, pp. 171–254, JSTOR 41974891, and 34, pp. 306–82, JSTOR 44080318, 1973–4 Predestination, God's Foreknowledge, and Future Contingents, translated by Marilyn McCord Adams and Norman Kretzmann, New York, Appleton Century Crofts, 1969 Translation of Tractatus de Predestination et de Prescientia Dei et de Futuris Contingentibus Quotalibital Questions, translated by Alfred J. Fredozo and Francis E. Kelly, 2 vols, New Haven, London, Yale University Press, 1991, translation of Quotalibata Septem Paul Spade, Five Texts on the Mediaeval Problem of Universals, Porphyry, Boethius, Abelard, Dunn Scotus, Occam, Indianapolis, in, Hackett, 1994 Five Questions on Universals from his Ordinatio d. 2 qq, 4-8 Topic. Theological works The De Sacramento Alteris of William of Ockham, translated by T. Bruce Birch, Burlington, Iowa, Lutheran Literary Board, 1930 Translation of Treatise on Quantity and on the Body of Christ topic. Political works and Princeps pro suo eucursu, Silicet guere, posit recipir bona ecclesiarum, etiam in vito papa, translated in political thought in early 14th century England, treatises by Walter of Milemeet, William of Pagula, and William of Ockham, translated by Carrie J. Netterman, Tempe, AS, Arizona Center for Medieval and Renaissance Studies, 2002. A translation of William of Ockham's work of 90 days, translated by John Kilcullen and John Scott, Lewiston, N.Y., E. Mellon Press, 2001 Translation of Opus Nonaginta Dirum Tractatus de Principis Theologia, translated in A Compendium of Ockham's Teachings, a translation of the Tractatus de Principis Theologia, translated by Julian Davies, Street. Bonaventure, N.Y., Franciscan Institute, St. Bonaventure University, 1998 on the Power of Emperors and Popes, translated by Annabel S. Brett, Bristol, 1998 Riga Wood, Occam on the Virtues, West Lafayette, Indiana, Purdue University Press, 1997 includes translation of On the Connection of the Virtues A Letter to the Friars Minor, and Other Writings, translated by John Kilcullen, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1995 includes translation of Epistola ad Fraters Menores a Short Discourse on the Tyrannical Government, translated by John Kilcullen, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1992 Translation of Breviloquium de Principitu Tyrannico William of Ockham, Question 1 of Eight Questions on the Power of the Pope, translated by Jonathan Robinson Topic. See also Ernest Addison Moody Gabriel Beale History of Science in the Middle Ages List of Roman Catholic Scientist Clerics List of Scholastic Philosophers Occam Programming Language Occam Algebra Oxford Franciscan School Philotheus Boehner Rule According to Higher Law Terminism Topic. Notes Topic. Further reading Adams, Marilyn 1987. William Ockham. Notre Dame, University of Notre Dame Press. ISBN 0-268-01940-1. Beckman, Jan 1992. Ockham Bibliography, 1900–1990. Hamburg, F. Minor Verlag. 
ISBN 978-3-7873-1103-3. Freppert, Lucan The Basis of Morality According to William Ockham. Franciscan Herald Press. ISBN 978-0-8199-0918-3. Keel, Rondo Ockham Explained, From Razor to Rebellion. Chicago and LaSalle, Illinois, Open Court. ISBN 978-0-8126-965-09. Retrieved 19 November 2012. Nish, George Political Occamism. Winnipeg, WCU Council of Learned Societies. ISBN 978-1-896637-00-6. Labalarte, Alberto Logica, Conoscenza e Filosofia della Natura in Guglielmo di Occam. Roma, Gruppo Albatros il Filo. ISBN 978-88-567-7421-4. Lenzen, Wolfgang Occam's Calculus of Strict Implication. Logica Universalis. 9 181–191. Doi 10.1007 per seconds 11780140114014. McGrade, Arthur Stephen. 2002. The Political Thought of William Ockham. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521522243. Panaccio, Claude. 2004. Ockham on Concepts. Aldershot, Ashgate. ISBN 978-0-7546-3228-3. Pelletier, Jenny William Ockham on Metaphysics. The Science of Being and God. Leiden, Brill. ISBN 978-9-0042-3015-6. Robinson, Jonathan William of Ockham's Early Theory of Property Rights in Context. Leiden, Brill. ISBN 978-9-0042-4346-0. Shearbaum, Sonia Occam's Assumption of Mental Speech, Thinking in a World of Particulars. Leiden, Brill. ISBN 978-9-0042-7734-2. Spade, Paul The Cambridge Companion to Occam. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-58244-X. Wood, Riga Occam on the Virtues. Purdue University Press. ISBN 978-1-55753-097-4. External links Medieval Logic and Philosophy, maintained by Paul Vincent Spade William of Ockham at the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy William of Ockham Biography at University of St. Andrews, Scotland Dialogus, Text Translation and Studies at British Academy, UK The Nominalist Ontology of William of Ockham, with an annotated bibliography Richard Utz and Terry Barakat, Medieval Nominalism and the Literary Questions, Selected Studies, Perspicitas the Myth of Occam's Razor by William M. Thorburn 1918. BBC Radio 4 In Our Time program on Occam Download and Listen Literature by and about William of Occam in the German National Library Catalog Works by and about William of Occam in the Deutsche Digital Bibliothek German Digital Library. Occam, Gilolmus. Repertorium. Historical Sources of the German Middle Ages. Geschichtsquellen des deutschen Mittelalters. <laughs>